The Morgan Report with David Morgan. Hello, it's David with you for the week ending 7 July 2017. So let's get right to it. First article is Wall Street on Parade. Headline reads, Financial System of U.S. Rests on Health of Just Five Mega Banks. Five mega banks are highly interconnected. Citigroup, Morgan Stanley, J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and Bank of America. This article goes on to quote Janet Yellen, who recently spoke and stated from the Federal Reserve's viewpoint that there's very unlikely the chance of a financial crisis in her lifetime. And she doesn't believe there will be one. She uses the word hope, which is a weak word. You can look that up. But the article goes on to state <clears throat> that the data shows just the opposite. In fact, the very body that provides the intelligence, the Financial Stability Oversight Council, the U.S. Treasury's Office of Financial Research, has been pumping out volumes of research that strongly suggest just the opposite. According to OFR's research, those five Wall Street mega banks hold the fate of the U.S. financial system in their highly interconnected and highly dangerous hands. Tragically, that's pretty much the same condition the U.S. was in heading into the crash of 2008. I'll leave it there. I highly recommend you read the whole article and be advised that the setup now is very similar to what it was in 2007. Only this time, I don't think it will be a government coming to the rescue as it will be nearly impossible in my studied view to see anyone come to the rescue the next time. Moving on, this is from the International Shipping News. Danish shipping giant Maserick's revenues could take a multi-million pound hit following last week's cyber attack. Maserick could take a multi-million pound <clears throat> following the disruption caused by a global cyber attack last week, according to experts. The news comes as a Danish shipping giant, which handles one in seven containers shipped worldwide, stated yesterday, and this was on the 7th, <clears throat> excuse me, the 5th of July. It has restored its major applications after bringing its IT systems back online. According to Lars Jensen, CEO and partner, Maserix books on average revenue of about $2.9 million in the 150 hours that Maserick systems were down, 435 million worth of revenues could be affected. So this just brings to the fore something I've been talking about from my speech in uh, Vancouver recently about the blockchain and precious metals. One major concern of mine and others is the amount of cyber warfare that's going on at all levels, government to government, retail businesses, the blockchains, etc. So this is one that I just want to bring to your attention. It's certainly not the only one, but it's a major effect on this particular company, and there will be more in the future. This is something that not is not talked about, in my view, often enough because it is extremely important. And continuing on the financial news, this is from Newsmax. This has been in the news lately. Don't count on pension plans for your retirement. Millions of Americans, particularly those who work for school districts and government agencies, depend on pension plans for retirement income. They work for decades, in some cases accepting lower pay, in the hopes they would receive sufficient benefits in retirement to live out just comfortably, just as comfortably as when they were working. Unfortunately, it's becoming more and more obvious that many pension plans won't be able to fulfill the promises they made to their workers goes on to talk about state government underfunding. State governments have been among the worst offenders when it comes to funding pension plans. Of course, everyone knows about the state of Illinois and what's going on there and how critical it is. And of course, their debt rating will be downgraded. The article goes on to talk about not just state governments. The problem of under, unfunded pension liabilities isn't unique to governments, however. Many localities have faced many of the same pension problems with unfunded liabilities contributing to the bankruptcies of California localities such as Stockton and San Bernardino. Lessons to be learned. As the old adage goes, you can't put all your eggs in one basket. Just like you don't want to invest all your money in a single stock, you shouldn't place all of your hopes in your company or agency's pension plan. If the plan goes under, you will be the one losing out. Diversification is the key to successful investing. 
how to protect yourself. The closer you get to retirement, the less risk you can afford to take with your investments. You need to, you need stable investments that will maintain your retirement's portfolio wealth, wealth while you're still allowing you enough growth to make your assets last through 20 to 30 years more of retirement. Uh, this is very critical for the baby boomers and everybody else, and this is not just U.S.-based. Of course, it's uh, not really globally. There's many countries that really don't have uh, employee-defined benefit programs. But, however, this is something that uh, you are responsible for. Yes, your employer might have made you a promise, but it's just like uh, government promises on their currency. They all promise that that money is going to be there. What they don't promise is what the value of that money will be when you need it. The bond market being a prime example. And the next headline is from the International Business Times. G20 Summit Security Involves 20,000 Police Officials to Protect World Leaders. As protests continue against the G20 Summit in Hamburg, Germany, the city's police plans to deploy more than 20,000 cops to ensure the security of world leaders. The agitation is expected to grow in the coming days. Police officials said they were keeping track of the activists coming from countries like Scandinavia, Switzerland, and Italy. The security officials will keep a constant vigil on the different ongoing activities in the city. Officers will patrol the city streets, skies, and waterways during the summit. Tensions increasing worldwide, obviously. This is almost on a weekly basis, and the populace is basically aligning against the leadership on a global basis. It's readily apparent for anyone with eyes to see, and there isn't a lot that can be done by the leadership, believe it or not, at this point. As far as I'm concerned, it's baked into the cake, and protesting is certainly your right. Peaceful protest I'm in favor of. But as far as affecting any real change, uh, don't expect that to happen. Most of these leaders really, one, don't understand the cause of the problem. And even if they do, there isn't much that can be done about it at this point. And probably more critical, this is from Bloomberg. Food prices near two-year high thanks to record surge in butter and wheat. We've been talking about food prices on and off on these weekly updates. Record butter prices Gains in meat and wheat drought-fueled rally have pushed global food costs near their highest in two years. Limited export availability in the dairy market has made products, including butter and cheese, more expensive. While hot and dry weather in the U.S. and Europe in the past months sent wheat futures surging. I want to interject here. I just got back from London, and you know last week's update was pre-recorded. I met several people in London at our gathering, and one of them introduced me to a, a documentary, which I love. I love to learn, and it's called Cowspiracy. It's like conspiracy, except it is cow, C-O-W. Highly recommend those that are intrigued by many of the problems that face the globe <clears throat> or the plane, depending on your perspective. Regardless... Take a look at Cowspiracy if you have a time this weekend or when you have some free time. Very enlightening video. And it's one of those in-your-face open secrets that no one talks about. I commend the people that put this uh, documentary together. It has to do with uh, the food situation. And it's something that was very eye-opening to, to yours truly. And finishing with precious metals, both gold and silver have been under severe pressure lately. There's a lot of articles out there on the reasons why. I just want to point out that uh, we, have, we are going to put out uh, information here on our free list, which is available at themorganreport.com. Sign up with the first name and your primary email address. And there is a campaign that we'll be promoting that has to deal with how to beat the bankers at their own game. Basically, uh, you can complain about the manipulation all you want, but if you could take some action, which is available with the free webinar that we're providing, you can at least learn how it is done and what you can do to counteract what's going on in the precious metals markets. Moving on from there, the Silver Institute just opened up with their June 2017 uh, newsletter that we'll post on our website, but it's available for free for everyone. And some of the headlines on the June issue, silver paste on rubber allows wire to stretch five times its length. 
Silver moves data closer to light speed. Global silver mine production drops in 2016 for the first time in 14 years. Silver plus graphene may lead to stronger weapons, <coughs> weapons against bacteria. Four-in-one catalyst uses silver to get the job done. Can crabs and silver kill dangerous mosquitoes? Lots of inter interesting news around the silver market always. And I will leave it there. I'll be back with you next week for another weekly update.